O tēnā koutou katoa, atua tahi māku mihi atu ki te tātou kaihanga i runga rawa, ko io te tīmatanga me te whakamutunga o ngā mea katoa. Tua rua huriana ngā mihi ki a rātou ko e whetu rangi tia, rātou o tēnei rohe o tēnā rohe o tērā rohe puta noa te motu e ngā mate haere, haere ho ki atu koutou. I tēnei wā huriana ngā mihi ki tēnei whare, ki tēnei marae mō tātou i tēnei wā, he whare wānanga, he whare whakaruru hau tēnei mō tēnei kaupapa ko te mā tauranga. Kia whaka pai, kia whaka tika anō te haura, kia whaka hiki te haura te oranga o tātou o te kāinga o te whenua nei. Nō reira ten, te te whare i tūtonu, tūtonu, tūtonu. I tēnei wai huriana ngā oku reo i te reo tūrua, kia whaka maramatu kia tātou katoa. Kia ora, Lee. Thank you very much for the introduction and thank you to Genai, to David and Joe from Genai for the invitation to come down here today. Just a special acknowledgement to my mentor, uh, my sorry, my student um, who I'm mentoring, uh, Ezekiel, and who's come down from Kaitaia uh, today to witness leadership in action. So, uh, <laughs> from the other panellists. <laughs> so, kia ora, Ezekiel, and kia ora, no hoki toku huaranga I want to say thank you for the opportunity to come here today and talk about uh, how technology and health can be coupled to improve health outcomes. In particular, I have an interest in health outcomes affecting disadvantaged and vulnerable communities. In particular, um, disparate outcome, health outcomes, inequitable health outcomes. And I actually believe, and we've already heard a little bit today, that, uh, that actually vulnerable communities are likely to benefit significantly from the use of technology and health. And you know, with 54% of people in South Auckland, which we would consider a high risk and high needs community, having access to smartphones. So that's really exciting because I, I, I certainly subscribe to this belief that we need to look innovatively at, at, um, at ways to improve health outcomes for disadvantaged people and technology could be a real key. And we, we're using that in some way, in some fashion in, in our little um, part of the country. Awesome, it's up there. Okay, so, um, Lee, just a small correction. It's not actually that I believe every Māori child and father should have this opportunity. It's every child in New Zealand. Every child, every father in New Zealand should have the opportunity to embrace their child, uh, their, their father, and know that they will get, um, the, they will have protection, they'll have inspiration, they'll have role modelling and guidance as a, as, a, as a child looking into their father's eyes. And equally, the father can look into that child's eyes and realise that that their child is a, a being of potential, a being of um, absolute wonder that will will just knock this world out in, in the future. The, the, the point is, not everyone, not every child, not every father has an opportunity to, to, to have this photo op, this photo moment. So, this is important because um, I've got a I've got a little bit of a, a passion for looking, making this sort of a, a photo opportunity for for every father and every child in New Zealand. So. I'm talking a little bit about poverty-related disease, poverty-related preventable disease, it's really important to note. So the issues that drive poverty are significant, they're huge, they're, they're related to policy in decades, if not centuries, of issues. The question I have is, how can we use technology to address some of these important barriers to healthcare, these important drivers for disparate and inequitable outcomes? So access is a big issue for poverty, people living in poverty and inequitable disease. So do we ask ourselves the question, could technology address this? And I think today my biggest feeling is absolutely yes, it can. 54% of people in South Auckland have access to a smartphone, therefore have access to internets and applications. Thank you to the team from the County's Monaco. Um, that could enhance their health outcomes. Uh, quality care. The other thing is we talked about this at the, the brief session we had before this presentation was we can standardise care with decision, um, uh, clinical decision support software, etc., etc. applications that make sure that we as clinicians are doing a very um, well, uh, providing good quality care to, to the patients that need it um, the most. It's no good just having access to care, but if that care is not of a high quality. And uh, health literacy, we deal, you know, the people living in poverty are going to have, liter have health literacy um, problems. But you've, again, the health, uh, the county's Monaco team demonstrated how you can bring technology into people's home and allow health literacy to be increased immediately with um, relevant and culturally appropriate, say, um, information. 
the, the, the SO, SO at the bottom, the SO-SO is the same old, same old, doesn't work. So we have to think of innovative ways to change things, to do things. And um, yeah, so, 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 same old, same old. So, okay. Technology problems again. So, uh, I should have an extra few minutes for this. <laughs> okay, so it's coming, I think. So, I, I think it's not rocket science, and if um, Dr. Ben Carson was here, I'd say it wasn't brain surgery. Um, <laughs> some of the things we can do to address poverty-related preventable disease is not difficult, and, I'll, and if I go back to some of the, these are photos of me in Kaitaia. Um, inequitable disease, MRSA infection, super infection of eczema, skin infections of impetigo, infected eczema, cellulitis, infected scabies, these are all, these aren't, this is not brain surgery, this is very simple and technology could help to address these very important uh, disparate problems. So MRSA again, MRSA in the eye, MRSA on the face, the skin. You know, the, you know, I've looked after a child, premature baby. We got it through the rough time, and any pediatric or neonatal specialist here would realise that we got this child through the roughest time of its life, up to sort of three years, and it succumbed to MRSA pneumonia. Caught from um, a preschool, a daycare, where there was just rampant MRSA skin infections. So I struggle when I talk to public health teams and say, hey, what are you going to do about MRSA? And I get told that it's so common, we don't do anything about it now. We, don't consider, we consider it less of importance than obviously TB and hepatitis and other um, and severe infectious public health problems. But when you see kids die of something that is preventable, poverty related, it's, it's a real challenge to your, you know, your beliefs. So, so the issue here is... Oh, the other thing, it's not rocket science. I mean, this, this is a child who came from south, somewhere in the south of the North Island or southwest of the North Island, somewhere around Palmerston. Am I getting too close? <laughs> and they had three months of a skin infection. Mum did everything right, and mum will be called by the media the typical sort of Māori solo parent who didn't listen, didn't take the child to the doctor, and um, wasn't um, aware enough of the issues. But it was, it was completely wrong. This mother had taken the child to the doctor four times, had been given three courses of antibiotics for which it was had completed it, uh, and um, had this child who she loved dearly look like that for three to four months. It actually looks worse on close-up. And I saw this child on a Thursday, and this is what it looked like on a Tuesday, after four months. So you might say, it was, it was just that we, quality care is not always and given when you go into our health system, unfortunately. It was culturally inappropriate care. Māori child with a non-healing skin infection in my clinic has got MRSA. So that was uh, a real, it's a real watershed moment for me in terms of what we need to do um, to make things better. So technology can allow quality to be consistent. So uh, connecting people with health, to health with technology. So I think this is the real opportunity because health and technology have come together. We have CT scanners, MRIs, we have all sorts of imaging, all sorts of diagnostics um, to make our job easier as clinicians. Diagnosis is faster, more accurate, um, short, short of stay in hospital perhaps, all these things. Technology has definitely helped. My, my real drive would be to see how we could allow access to be increased with technology. I think there's a gap between what we're doing with technology and within the clinical circles to how it can bridge the gap of people having access to healthcare. That's exciting to me and that's what we're doing up north. So can we fix it? Well, clearly we can. Cotramoxazole, three days later. Um, and, and I'm just going to show, because we, we've started up in Kaitai, and I'm just really proud to have met the team from Counties Marako, because we're doing similar work up in Kaitai in the far north. So it's a telemedicine program. We call it a virtual, virtual muko. Um, we, the muko program is a rheumatic fever-based uh, manawa order, korokoro order, so, uh, healthy heart through healthy throat. So we, we've been in, in the Kaiatai community, we've been sending staff into 14 schools, 2,000 children doing throat swabs, but we've incorporated skins into that. The question is how do we actually reach the other 700 children that live in outlying areas and very, very remote with very limited um, health services and technology is the answer. So how can we can't send people into the schools but we can send technology? So the schools we're talking about, so this is Kaitai here. So we have 
schools up around here and here and all over the place that we're going to be launching into. Sort of rural, you know, <laughs> I, know I know South Auckland has rural properties and I was just being smart, but this um, real rural New Zealand. So the idea is to... The idea is to have, you know, there's a community up here that gets a doctor every fortnight and a nurse maybe once or twice a week, but how can we make sure health stays in that community, owned by the community? Um, well, technology can do that. And so what we're doing, is, so these are the things that we'll see on any given day. Now these children, and this is probably, say, 50% of the snapshot of, of skins that we'll see on, on, on a week in Kaitaia, and you'll see them in South Auckland, no doubt. But these kids are trying to learn at school. I just don't know how that could happen. You know, if that's not sore and um, irritating, it's going to be, you know, they'll be pretty brave. So what we're doing in, in Kaiatai in the far north is we're using, so we're using iPads and apps. So uh, Ruth, I met Ruth before, we're using an app. We've developed an app that sits on an iPad <clears throat> and it's, it's targeted at skins. And so if we, my question to you as clinicians is, if you saw some of these things on, you got given an image that was packaged up on an app and sent to you with some information, which is um, clinic, what I think clinically important, uh, a, 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 thermo a temperature, pulse oximetry to see if they're tachycardic, febrile, you know, some weight, because we're going to give them treatment. You know, if you had a, a family member or a member of the community or that school taking, collecting this data, this information and packaging it up and putting it onto a secure server that then gets beamed down to a doctor or a nurse sitting in Kaitaia, could you make a clinical call on some of these things that you're seeing? 90% of the time you could say, yep, I can treat that child without even seeing them. They don't have to leave their community. Better still, the authors of their own health are the people that are running this program in their community. So the people that we're giving the apps to, the iPads, the clinical uh, technology, the digital thermometers, etc. And they will be caring for their own children. They'll be caring. This is just skins, but we're just starting. This is just a start from what we, what we think we could achieve. So essentially, child goes into school. Three times a week, there'll be someone with the app, an iPad, all this stuff. And they'll say, who has sores on their skin? Or, and they'll take a photo. They'll bundle up this information and send it to us. We'll make a decision. They'll get some antibiotics. And these kids will remain well in that little beautiful part of of New Zealand up into Harpoa, that is. So, the exciting thing is, where to from here? And, uh, you know, just coming here today was exciting. Just actually coming and listening to some of the opportunities and listening to the great presentation that I heard before lunch that was happening in Counties Monaco because it makes us think that we are on the right track. So, about personal responsibility, technology in our, in our initiative actually is allowing people to have that personal responsibility and we you know we're quite comfortable I'm quite comfortable of allowing these pit communities to have a lot more control over their health than we need to have so well what's what's the possibilities well you know spirometers are the same size as your own you know you could get bluetooth to your iphone this wonderful thing that I spoke at a presentation recently at the population health intensive and that we've spoken at and this um, doctor gave me, sent up his, I think it's a Welsh Allen digital stethoscope. Now what's, what's fantastic about this is it can save 12, 30 second sound bites of chest sounds. And you can Bluetooth it. So imagine if there's a person in that wonderful community of Tahapa, which is 135 kilometres north of Kaitai, who has a child who's got a normal temperature but has had a cough for two or three weeks and you can, with hopefully a degree of um, accuracy, put, say to that person who's the mum or the, the school administrator, record four, you know, in four parts of the anterior posterior chest, maybe the auxiliary region, their, their heart sound, uh, their chest sounds, and you know, send it, package it up with that information that's going to be on the app, and send it through to us, and we can hopefully make some decisions. This won't cause harm, I don't believe, because these communities aren't getting served in the first place. So I actually think we can do this. And I don't think we should not do it because of lots of reasons that I've heard. <laughs> um, and as I was speaking to someone before, um, you do have to shake the tree and you will get bits of wood falling on you, but it's usually dead wood, um, <laughs> to actually make change. So uh, it's a little bit, probably a little bit uh, 
of a finishing note. But anyway, I just want to say thanks again for the opportunity to come down here today. I'm going to learn more than I um, have been able to t um, present, no doubt. So, no reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, kia ora mai tātou katoa.